Hi everyone, um, welcome to webinar by Radix. Today we'll talk about traits, extra speed and how to employ all advantages of advanced hardware. In a minute, Dmitry Smirnov will start his presentation and you're always welcome to send your questions to live chat. It's right in the right side of the screen. Dmitry will pick them up and answer after his presentation. And also, there will be a short um, slide from Sergei Fedorov, Vice President, International Sales. So, Dmitry, please. Uh, hi, all. Uh, hi, all, and thanks for joining the webinar today. Uh, I will introduce myself briefly. My name is Dmitry Smirnov, and I'm a principal software developer at Radix Company. Today we will talk about NVMe technology and RAID technology, existing software solutions for NVMe storage, and our research works, performance tests, and our solution. Uh, NVMe, NVMe market expands rapidly. More and more vendors provide uh, servers with NVMe slots. NVMe devices will be everywhere soon. They are fast and have good capacity, but no fault tolerance, as they are just devices. When we need fault tolerance, we use software-defined solutions, storage arrays, RAIDs, clusters. But what about the performance? Do we have uh, efficient software solutions to create fast and reliable storage? This is the question. Uh, there are free and paid software solutions for NVMe RAID. Uh, default Linux software RAID, MD RAID, ZFS with RAID realization, uh, Intel solution, VROC, and uh, other popular software defined storages for NVMe that are fast too. For our tests, we took several free software solutions MD RAID 6 with double parity and ZFS RAID with double parity. Test system had 10 NVMe devices. Our performance tests were based on SNEA benchmark. As you can see, random read performance of existing MD rate in, is three times lower than total drive performance. But uh, random write performance and random mix performance are much lower than should be. ZFS results are extremely low too. It looks like existing free solutions are not efficient enough on random workloads. So we need new software solution as fast as all NVMe devices. Mm, but how to design the fastest NVMe RAID? First, let's decide on performance. Some solutions offer 24 gigabytes per second and 5 million IOPS per one unit server on a single node. But we have to be faster at least uh, 35 gigabytes per second per single node and uh, 5 million IOPS, it's okay. Uh, latency, latency depends on user workload and uh, NVMe devices. Uh, the most important and the most difficult is to be fast on mixed workload and in degraded mode. The next point, lightweight. Some solutions require a lot of CPU and RAM resources. Uh, we are not greedy and require 4 GB RAM, not 64, only 4. Next, next, flexibility. Our RAID should work with any, any NVMe device, local or network, from any vendor. Uh, also, it should support the POSIX API and provide local block device because we don't want to rewrite any applications and file systems. Uh, next, uh, performance principles. And uh, so our research begins. Uh, on uh, your way to, be to the fastest rate, remember the fundamental rules. First, you need the fastest rate calculation engine because slow checks and calculations affect almost every I.O. Second, if you want the maximum IOPS and the minimal latency, for, uh, forget about the logs on your code and uh, count only in the localized product architecture. 
Do not listen to your developer who tells you that it's impossible to write storage database without any log. Some storages have problems when both read and write requests are processed in parallel. If you have local architecture, mixed workload shouldn't affect total performance. Mm, lightweight principles. Actually, CPU usage depends on user, work user workload. How many are your requests will arrive at your storage. But if your storage uses all CPU resources, nothing is left for other applications. Lockless architecture is the choice. Remove spin locks from your code. Remove scheduling. Remove context switching. Scheduling and context switching are specific operations of threat interaction. They are slow and low CPU a lot. RAM. RAM in storage is necessary for rates with parity, for read modify rate, uh, for read modify write operations, uh, as memory in uh, is used for calculating checksums and operating in degraded mode. So RAM usage depends on user workload and on your storage architecture. Some storages require 64 gigabyte RAM or more, but we believe it's possible to achieve high IOPS with much less RAM. Actually, 8 gigabyte or even 4 gigabyte is enough. Uh, before the start of the development, the first question was where to develop RAID, in user space or in kernel space? The main user space advantage is a great performance. It's well known. But user space has disadvantages as well. No local block device, no POSIX API, so you need to rewrite applications and file systems. The main kernel space advantage is the block device and the compatibility with applications and file systems. So we choose the kernel driver, mainly because of POSIX compatibility. A few words about our software rate architecture. It is presented by Linux kernel module and works with block devices, local or remote NVMe drives from any transport, PCI Express, U2, M2, from NVMe or F target, by fiber channel or InfiniBand or SAS, doesn't matter. And it provides a local block device to user. Mm, now some technical moments. Everyone knows that rates with checksums have uh, fault tolerance. Checksums uh, are used to recover the data. It's called erasure coding. There are several standard mathematical algorithms for calculating the checksums. Uh, on the slide, you can see the standard approach to any vectorized calculations that requires these vectorized operations, XOR and uh, load and store, bit shifts and shuffle. Radix team does not use standard approaches since the complicated is slow. Also, we believe that we can do better vectorization than standard approach. So for the fast rate, we have designed a new calculation engine, which is fast and simple. It uses only one simple vector operation, XOR, and has less data move operations. After the presentation, if there are questions, we can talk about the algorithms, as I don't want you to fall asleep right now. So go next. Mm. The main performance challenge was the data pass with IO handling. Uh, look, uh, threads working with the same stripe can write data and update checksum in parallel. Uh, this is a problem. So we can use locking mechanism for the stripe, but in this case, the performance worsen. Or we can work without the locking mechanism, but we lose data integrity. Uh, the second problem is scheduling. When a your request comes from, from the thread, we should keep this I.O. in the same thread, on the same CPU. Otherwise, the performance will be lost. So the solution. The solution was to use a dynamic mapping algorithm for stripes and threads.
to avoid logs and save data integrity. Also, this approach allows uh, us to handle I.O. without scheduling to another thread. Mm. Now, performance testing results. Remember, we still have 10 NVMe devices, 10. As you can see, random read performance of the new NVMe rate is close to total NVMe performance, 5 million IOPS. The random write performance and random mix performance are much higher than existing free solutions, but not maximum because of the rate penalty. The sequential read performance is almost, is almost the same as total, 35 gigabytes per second. Uh, the next, uh, next, this is a latency test and CPU utilization test. Latency and CPU utilization depend on user workload and uh, IOPS. Random read latency for different IOPS numbers uh, is from 20 to 70 microseconds. Uh, CPU utilization on random read uh, the same is from 20 to 50 percent. Uh, so what can I say? These performance principles uh, are the basis of our Radix 5 software. All optimizations uh, allow us to achieve these performance results, which are almost hardware limited. If you have any questions, I will be ha happy to answer them right now. And please, you are always welcome to contact me via email. Thank you. And the next slide by Sergey. Yes. Hello. Hello. Okay. And uh, in fi finally, uh, thank you, Dmitry, for your presentation. It was very educational for me, <laughs> for example. I think for our partners too. And uh, let me invite uh, you, uh, our dear partners, to our renewal partner program. Now we can suggest uh, for you special prices and discount, inclusive deal registration program. Also, we can grant for you free NFR license for test and full support of our technology technical team. Uh, also, we developed this uh, market leaders ready to building solutions on old technologies and of, co of course on current NVMe technology. Uh, we can offer for, uh, for you solutions from uh, companies such as Western Digital, Lenovo, Supermicro. Also now we can offer for you marketing funds and rebate if you achieve uh, quarterly or yearly targets. And of course, we can offer for you joint pre-sale activities with our technical team. And uh, in the bottom of my slide, you can see contacts. Uh, it's a URL, URL for, from our portal from radix.com and uh, you can see direct contacts of our partner group. There are Andrei Ulyukov, and Alexandra Lubimtsova. And of course, you can see my direct contacts and you can be free to reach me at any time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dmitry. Thanks, Sergey. Are there any questions from listeners today? Okay, if there are not, always remember that we are grateful for your comments, ideas, thoughts, and feel free to send us your questions via email. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We will send the record very soon, in a day or two. Um, thanks again for your time and attention, and have a nice day.